going to cover Gat's whole face. start off tonight with um, our whiskey shill. This is the Dalmore, aged 12 years. Uh, great, great whiskey. It says here you can purchase it for 40 euro. The rating is 4 out of 5. Uh, we were gifted this bottle by a, a generous supporter. By a generous supporter. Let me make a check. The Dalmore 12 year old is aged in bourbon barrels for the first nine years after which half of the remaining spirit is aged for an additional three years in sherry butts. <laughs> Not sure what that means, but that is the Dahmer 12 year. Glasses or no glasses? I hate the glasses. I hate them. There you go. You just uh, command plus or whatever. A little bit more, zoom in more. Bring the mouse pad over here so you can scroll down from over here. It's wireless, bro. Wow, that's what happens. And, happened move, and then move it to the side so we can see our, ourselves. And then we'll get these we'll get these kids fired up. I can't I can't get it to work. What's wrong? Mouse pad. Oh my goodness. Here you got it. I don't use Max. I'm a PC guy. I'm a, P, I'm a PC guy. Well, all right. Can we read that? Yeah, I can read it. All right. All right, so you guys know how Whiskey Wednesdays work. This Should is mostly Q&A. Uh, we're obviously going to say a few important things. I know Birch has some pretty um, opinionated views Earth of the market. Shattering. Right Earth shattering views of the market right now. Uh, so maybe we'll start off with that, and then we'll just you know get into get into the questions right after. So I think you want to talk about what Ethereum. What some things on Ethereum you wanted to say? Yeah. So I wouldn't say that these are earth shattering views. They're just. Uh, things that I've been thinking about that I've been ship posting about on Twitter we've talked a lot about how the alt market tends to follow Ethereum right mm -hmm. and so a lot of people are looking for support in Ethereum or like to follow the Ethereum chart I know Luke Martin is a big fan of following the channel uh, for Ethereum to, to find um, cheap alts versus expensive alts and personally uh, $400 USD for me is a really strong support for Ethereum uh, it, it also is if you look at the chart um, even though it falls below that like uptrend that a lot of people are looking at 
And if we hit four hundred dollars for Ethereum, which I think is exceptional support, I'd have to get more drunk if it, Ethereum hits. It's only it's only a ten percent move down, so that's not that's not too crazy from where it is now. The total market cap comes back to the two hundred eighty billion dollar level, and that is where the market cap has continued to find support, going back before the bull run. And we saw last time it bounced off two eighty headed back towards the uptrend. And we're talking total market cap here and got rejected and it's coming back down. So I'm looking to load my all bag soon uh, across the board, um, but I'm looking to do it uh, around the time that Ethereum hopefully hits around 400. But like you, I'm not trying to catch a perfect bottom or a perfect top necessarily every day. So if I miss it and I, and I miss 10 or 15%, I'm okay with that. Cause right now I'm primarily on the sidelines with a lot of my free cash. So that, that's a, you're still on the sidelines with with like thirty percent. I'm like thirty percent fiat right now. Yeah. I mean, normally I'm zero. Oh, you're in fiat still thirty percent. Thirty percent like fiat. Okay. Uh, see, I, I went back into most of my alts. I'm like seventy yeah. percent alts now in thirty percent Bitcoin. I got in some alts with <coughs> my Bitcoin, but I'm still out. You guys know what alts I'm I'm trading right now. I post the portfolio screenshots. Uh, you know those are a pain in the ass to do, but but people seem to really like them, so I gotta keep posting them. Uh, my biggest bags right now: N Cash, Tiber Network. Uh, OCN. I don't have any ICX. Neither uh, do I. I'm just, I'm just not an icon Kore guy. Korean Jew would have our head for that. I know, no, you do that every day. He's like, you got to pick up some icon. You got to pick up some cash. And so, those are yeah. on my, those are on my pickup list. But I just haven't gotten yeah. around to them. There, there's too many charts, uh, mostly on KuCoin, that they just look too good. Like I, I can't stay away from them. Tell me about QLC. Yeah. QLC. Tell me about QLink. Did, did who got into QLink? QLink was a good one. Q-Link was a really good one. I feel like the comments are really far behind. They may be. Oh, we're probably... No, we're scrolled all the way down. Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, here they come. Uh, yeah, see, we're way behind. No, that's the oh, first one. Yeah. Uh, so Q-Link. Yeah, Q-Link's had some huge updates lately. I think what most people want to know, though, is... All right, all right so we didn't get in when, when Q-Link was first talked about. Uh, then the Binance listing happened. It went crazy. It came back down, found perfect support, bounced off that... Is it too late to get into the Q link? Is the question I keep getting. Um, listen, we're making different trades. However, because I got in very early and I took some profits and I re-entered, so we're in a different setup. My risk, my risk is different now. I can afford to take a different loss. Uh, I wouldn't buy most things at this stage, but Q link is one of those that maybe for the thirty-minute chart right now doesn't look very good, but for the next month to two months, uh, I've done a lot of research on Q link. That's why we, that's why we put it out there before the Binance listing because we had a feeling things were heating up. And so the, the answer is I think yes, I think you can scale into QLink safely, not financial advice. Uh, it's not something that, that I'm just flipping. It's not just like a quick flip for me personally. I was in with you and I, I sold about 20% of my QLink right around 2,200 sats this morning just because I wanted to move uh, into a new position. But I'm gonna be holding mine. Like it's still 4X away from the all time high. They just put out one of their biggest updates with uh, you know yep. the updated DAP version. I think it was version 0.3. Uh, they have the Binance, they just had the Binance listing. They're getting listed on CoinNest next week, I believe, yeah. which is a Korean exchange. Uh, we saw what happened to Storm once it got listed on a Korean exchange. On top of that, Binance has a trading competition with Q-Link uh, for the next week, and the volume's just been insane. Uh, and it's been with, huge. It you know, was the second highest Q-Link volume day in its history. I think today the volume's 80 million, and it's a $50 million market cap, and you know, when that many people are seeing it and trading it, whether it's for the trading competition because of the updates, you know, speculative, uh, I think it's going to keep on going a little bit. One of the catalysts I'm looking forward to, you know, what, what we've noticed is that FA, some catalysts, especially larger ones like exchange listings, have been moving coins. Mm -hmm. And that's because some of the liquidity is some of the liquidity is so low on some of these exchanges that the prices are just climbing as people rush to buy when they hit new exchanges. So. Uh, in saying that, with QLink, the liquidity's there. There's plenty. There's plenty of trading volume, which is exciting. Um, one thing that I think has a chance to move this coin is the fact that they are rumored to be doing a full and total rebrand, and the rumor has been confirmed by QLink. Uh, not only, um, uh, at the very least, they confirmed it in Telegram. So they confirmed it by their admin. So. More to come so on that. Whole confirmed floor. rebrand. It says that in their Telegram from their admin. So we I haven't. Feel, we're I feel like we could have a, a Venn type play ahead of us, where you know no one's talking about It's decentralized Wi-Fi. They're you know going for these hotspots and. And then they just start stuff. to pump out these updates. I mean, rebrands re are big. We haven't seen a rebrand so. in a while. Uh, and I one so. one thing I'm waiting for 
in the next couple of days, you know, the end of March, March 31st, that's the end of Q1. And if you look at these coins roadmaps, a lot of them have updates that they said by the end of Q1, mostly exchange listings. So we're, we're, we're gonna see like, are they gonna meet their updates? Are they really gonna get these uh, things out there? And the way that all the charts look, they're all bottomed out. They're all trading in a really Not tight all. range. A, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of them, a bottomed out trading in a tight range with updates that they say by the end of Q1. Uh, you know, we're looking to get into another bullish season. I'm personally bullish right now in the market. Uh, everything's just starting to line up. Like March 31st, if these updates start to come out, these coins will start to move. People will feel comfortable buying yeah. alts knowing that updates are coming out. Uh, it's gonna be interesting. It's really if, gonna be if interesting. You look, if you look at the month of March, the market caps, the market has come down 33, 35% in March. So it's not insignificant, but of late, it has been appearing to move fairly sideways, the market. That is what we need before it's gonna when it before it's gonna pump. No, nothing in, in any asset class, it's it's not gonna crash, right? And then pump right back up. That's almost always gonna be a dead cat or exactly. a bull trap. Um, you're just not gonna see that. And so we need it to move sideways yeah, for we need it to move sideways for I think at least a few weeks. Allow for some nice consolidation, some final capitulations across the different coins, and then we can get ready to rock. Let's see about. And that a few weeks of consolidation that would all line up with the, the end of yeah. taxes and the end of taxes and um, April, mid-April, end of April. Gats yeah, also holding at that's false. I'm not holding. I think I have maybe 0.2 percent of my portfolio in Ethereum right now. That guy Luke is that the Luke I'm thinking of? Uh, why so big on Kyber? So fundamentally, Kyber's there. They just put out their beta. Uh, that's absolutely huge. And on top of that, over the last couple of months, I've noticed Kyber get integrated or say they're going to be integrated with like 10 different wallets. And uh, if you don't know what Kyber is, Kyber is a DEX, so it's a decentralized exchange. And uh, you just, just the partnerships that they've been announcing on top of where it is on its chart, it's nearing all time lows. It just finished the market cycle. You know, I, I think it's just a really good hold easy uh two to three x over the next couple months you know it's not one of the, my moon bags that i think oh my god you know if this really goes i'm going to be set for a while but uh you know i was comfortable putting uh you know 10 percent of my portfolio into it i think i put nine or ten percent of my portfolio into it and i'm just going to leave that because i know uh over time that's going to be a two to three x that's a really safe play for me i like it and uh, ncash yeah ncash uh, melvin is one of my other biggest holdings i think Same. that coins like ncash are going to have some pretty significant performance uh, coming up. We just saw it with Storm. I think NCash is going to have a similar situation. It will get listed on a Korean exchange or something like Bitrix and have a, some really substantial, uh, a substantial move. I missed that Storm initial, uh, the initial Storm because of a work trip. Should uh, I hold? I think Storm Storm Storm's is starting great. to move up again. Storm has been looking great. Storm's great. It's hanging out at what, 100, 150 million dollar market cap, 160 million dollar market it's cap. Up, it's, up, it's up above that. I haven't checked the market yet. What's the highest price you guys think Bitcoin can reach? Uh, by the end of the year, I would be surprised if it went over 40 or 45K. Um, but long term, you know, John McAfee, 500K by 2020, I can, can still, I can see it happening. I, I can cannot. actually see it happening. I cannot. You can't see it happening? I cannot. I, I can't see it, I, 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 you know. I can see I can see the hype pushing it up into the mid 30s, maybe touch 40k by the end of this year. I have a hard time. the The entirety of the market would have to evolve so much for that kind of money to pump into Bitcoin, and then consequently the rest of the market that it's going to lose market share. And I think it's going to have a really hard time. I like think the, I think about this market cap for, for Bitcoin to be what if, for, if Bitcoin was going to be 500k, we'd have to have like a what 15 trillion dollar market cap trillion. with about 50 percent Bitcoin dominance. I feel like. Which is possible. That it's would be that would be just impossible. a little bit bigger than the tech bubble. Yeah. So it's I mean, it sounds it's hard crazy. for me to wrap my head around. It yeah. Sounds crazy, but you know, one, one of those options little, trading. One of those little bitcoins that you hold in in your uh, desk over there could could be worth five hundred k one day. Yeah. You have the physical bitcoins. Physical right? bitcoins. Yeah. yeah. If you guys don't know that they make physical bitcoins now. You can buy them on Amazon. They're like yeah. nine bucks because huge, huge discount on Amazon. Yeah, they trade at like nine dollars. They, they told me they were cheap because no one accepts them yet, but that once they're integrated, they'll be worth market value. So I bought a bunch of them. Thoughts on Key? Okay, so Key is a project I really support. Not the Key. I, I support Self Key. Uh, K E Y. It's only listed on KuCoin right now, and they're one of those KYC companies, and their wallet's going to be integrated with Kyber. They're going to have ERC twenty trading. 
within their wallet and on top of that they're going to have a one step KYC and Ethereum send uh, for an ICO. So what that means is if I want to do an ICO, you know, there's a lot of bullshit you have to deal with, but through the key, uh, or sorry, through key, they're going to offer a, a all in one step. It's a, they already have your information, your information stored safely on the blockchain and, and you can send it straight from the wallet with your Ethereum. And on top of that, they're going to also allow you to segment data. So say, I mean, my best example is, uh, you know, they, they store a lot of data about me over time. They build a huge profile about me. Like they, they have a lot of my information, whether it's my ID, my social security number, uh, what color my eyes are, what color my hair is. But so if I went to a liquor store, say, and I wanted to pay with key, obviously this is way down the road, uh, like five to 10 years from now, um, I could prove to them I'm 21 without showing them my license. The only information that the network would give them is that they know I'm 21 and it's uh, verified. So it's just a way to kind of segment your data and it allows personal protection. And I think of it like TSA pre-check too from exactly. an ICO standpoint. It's just you're already cleared, uh, everything's already there and it allows for a more seamless use case. And there's obviously a lot of companies trying to do this, but uh, Key has been around for five to six years. It's been a KYC company and they all just moved into crypto and they have like a hundred person team. I think it's around a what, 17, $16 million market cap maybe $20 million market cap. I, I think it's uh, one, one of the moon bags. You know, that's something that you buy and you hold. And if they become one of the most successful KYC companies, that's gonna be a 20 or 30 X. Uh, obviously it's a high risk play, but you know, th those are what I like to deal with. If you have 10 high risk plays yeah. and two of them play out, you know, you're gonna be trading, you're gonna have more significant gains than most of the people on the market. That's 100%. How do you think they'll, do you think they can tie in uh, with what Polly's trying to do? I mean, Polly ruined my life, but <laughs> a, guy, a guy earlier said he talked to the Polly team and uh, they, they had some really good things coming out, uh, some really big updates coming soon. Crypto Dale loves NCash. He also loves Lux. I love Lux too. Same. same. Let's talk about Lux. Let's talk about Lux and OCN. Uh, something I noticed this morning, I woke up and two of my favorite coins had these giant buy walls are huge. On 10, I mean, 20 Bitcoin, right? 20 and 30 Bitcoin. Yeah, and, and you say 20 and 30 Bitcoin, that's not huge. But when you're talking about a $5 it's million dollar market cap. It's got Bitcoin daily volume. Exactly. So you're talking about a $5 million market yeah. cap coin and a $40 million market cap coin. Those are pretty significant buys just waiting. And you know, those are the things I like to see when I'm holding a position. I want to see some uh, substantial money being put into the coin. I want, I want big believers in it. Because if they got that much Bitcoin, if they're throwing ten Bitcoin into it, why won't they throw ten like Bitcoin us? in it to pump the price after it? You know what right. I mean? Because if, if you have twenty Bitcoins to throw at a, at a small, cap, you're going to throw ten first and ten later. You're going to throw ten, ten first, ten one, later, and then you're going to use ten two. to kind of you know get things going, break down some walls. Uh, you know these guys have been around for a while; they they know how to make prices move. Thoughts on man uh, Matrix AI? I've talked about Matrix yeah. AI in my last few videos. Uh, I think it's a great idea. It's an awesome product. Uh, they're trying to make a, a blockchain that functions strictly off AI. It has smart contracts that are only made by AI, so they're supposed to be more secure. On top of that, they're gonna mix a proof of work and a proof of stake. Uh, for proof of work, they're gonna use uh, Markov chains, MCMC, which is uh, stats computations that you use for like probabilistic functions, so uh, you know, like, in the medical industry when they're trying to uh, do probability models, that's the kind of calculation you do. And they're, they're really calculation, like as far as the calculations go, they're, they're, they're computationally expensive. There's no easy way around it. So it would re remove any sort of ASICs miners. Um, the problem I have with matrix AI is the roadmap's really long, first of all, and I, that, that's not the kind of thing that I like to invest in. You know, I'm looking for quick flips. I like my Bitcoin. And then on top of that, uh, no one's been able to really implement a uh, useful proof of work yet. And so I'd like to see some updates on that before I invest in it. If they can show me that they can actually make a proof of work useful and you could use it in the real world for calculations, like. Well, you're a diehard, you're a diehard proof of stake fan, delegated proof of stake fan, especially. I love some delegated. It says proof delegated proof of stake across his chest. He's getting it tatted. I'm getting it tatted. DPOS. <laughs> DPOS. Let's see, what else do we got going? Hat. Are we still bullish on hat? We're, I guess we're bullish on hat until we're not. I'm I'm still bullish on hat. A lot of people are losing faith, but um, you know, I don't think it's going to be a problem. They're going to come to Chicago. The the hat devs are supposed to be in Chicago um, pretty soon. I'm going to come. I'm going to bring them to the office. Maybe I'll do a live stream with them. Why Chicago for Bitcoin bravado? 
Why Chicago? This, this is the come up. This is where it's all happening right now. Chicago's there, fun. There's there's crypto there's crypto meetups about five times a week across the city, which is really cool. It's a tech hub, and uh, there's a lot of good clubs that Gat really enjoys. Isn't AI keyword? Isn't AI keyword is the newest flavor of the month? I crypto. Um, if I if what you what I'm trying to understand, you're saying oh, you're AI is really popular thing. in crypto. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're, we're in a tech space. Obviously, there's a lot of AI. Uh, projects going about. Uh, there's a lot of AI trading that goes on. A lot on. of decentralized exchanges. There's a lot of. I see trading. a lot of things about Dragon. What, what's your stance on Dragon right now? So my stance on Dragon is it's got a hell of a lot more upside than down. Like, yeah. you know, if you got in at the ICO, which is when we started really pushing Dragon because we were fans of it, then and didn't take profits at two, three, four, five dollars. Hopefully, you learned a valuable lesson. Um, you have to take something. I still hold the vast majority of my dragon. I took more than enough. Um, and I think that there's way more upside than downside. And we have some pretty close contacts to the dragon team, and we've only heard good things coming out of their camp, and we've only heard that they're uh, really close to possibly um, some type of mainnet so they can have their actual utility, which is what's required for them to get onto Bittrex, among other things. So I'm excited to hold dragon at this price. I won't be buying more. I, <laughs> I don't need any more dragon, but I like it. I wonder how you guys don't have Zill on the radar. What do you mean? There's Zill Zill's in my portfolio. Zill, I'm, 7% of my portfolio is in Zill right now. Zill's going to have a huge breakout soon, in my opinion. Uh, I saw something about Monero, though. Excellent. Um, Ooh, I, I am long on Monero. They, they said, do you think Monero will stay the number one privacy coin? Uh, I have absolutely no doubt that Monero will stay the number one privacy coin. Pivix could give it a run, though. Pivix does Pivix could give it a marketing. run, but... You know, Monero just has too much support right now, and uh, you know it, it, it's already there. People use it, uh, but they don't. But you got to remember, they don't have like they're not they don't have like that central team behind it so much. So they don't have they're not <coughs> doing huge marketing spends. And when we go to these conferences, Pivix owns the stage. And as a lot of this new money comes in, I've been to three conferences where Pivix has had like a huge you know to do. Uh, they know how to spend money on it, and so I, feel like I, Monero, I love XMR. Though, I, feel, I feel like Monero though is used more for uh, you know actions it's that are frowned used. upon, yeah, like money, used. money laundering, you know, uh, yeah. huge money transfers, hiding. I'm just funds. looking like longer term. I think there's more upside in a smaller cap coin that I think can take a lot of market dominance. Oh, as far as upside yeah, goes, you know, my number one privacy coin is Lux. I say it every day, but Monero is Monero's not going to lose that number one spot as the lead privacy coin. Sure. I, I don't think you know. I, they, they're. I remember way back they were, um, getting, they were just getting implemented into the dark net when uh, yeah. Bitcoin was starting to have some problems where you know it wasn't fully anonymous. And I remember you know people started using Monero and when it's like got that first mover advantage, just like Bitcoin. It was the first one to really be a privacy coin that was legitimate. And now um, it, it would be very difficult to get rid of that. DBC's chart looks like OCN's chart four or five days ago. That, that's really true. Uh, I need to look more into DBC, but Binance seems to be listing NEP5 tokens, so that might be a catalyst. Thoughts on Neville? I, I don't really know much about Neville. I know it's similar to Strat, but I, I've never looked into it. You, you know a little bit yeah. about Neville. Um, I haven't, from a trade perspective, I have not looked at it since I exited you know, a month or so ago. So I'll take another look and post some updates. Um, but it's, it's something I was a big fan of back, back before the market took my soul. Uh, I'm also pretty bullish on payment tech. I think that 2018 is going to have a nice breakout for payment tech. And so if, if you want to diversify across that, that, that niche within the space, you can range from, you know, the 10Xs, uh, you got like 10X or pay, metal, um, all the way down to some of the, the smaller, the newer payment techs that are coming out on the scene. But uh, I really like, I really think that's going to be pretty big in getting crypto into the hands of payment tech main, main, mainstream. Yeah, just better payment tech. Like Metal's making a ton of updates. And anyone who's followed me for a long time knows I've always been a fan of Metal ever since Richard Branson put his name uh, kind of behind it, who's someone I idolize. I mean, he's the founder of Virgin and multi billionaire. Um, if it's good enough for him, I'll, I'll go in with I'll go in with him. Like ben, I'm not going to argue with him. What do I? Oh, hold on, I, I, I got to address this really quick. Ven CNBC article. What do you guys think? I would sell it right now. I didn't know they made a CNBC. <laughs> I, or, I didn't know they had, but if they do, I'm you literally going to go it. and sell Ven. You gotta, I'll, I don't I'm have sell all my Ven when I get home. If CNBC. We wrote we wrote Ven so hard. I'm happy with that. I'm out now. I I got out of Ven too early to be honest. 
Uh, do you think stores. the next billionaire will come from crypto? Uh, there's already a crypto billionaire. The the Big DeVos twins are crypto billionaires. Well, they're not now. They were at 18k. Oh shit. Yeah. So now, they're, wow. What's but it, will like the next billionaire? Back? I think there's new billionaires are minted every day. So will the next one be for someone in crypto? Korean. Will Jew the first trillionaire be someone from crypto? That's a different question. Will Jihan Wu or or Satoshi or Satoshi's Satoshi, wallet might be yeah, worth yeah, a trillion yeah. one day? Yeah, that's another question. Best Cryptopia, Cryptopia picks at the moment. Uh, I haven't been on Cryptopia in a while. Neither ever have I. What's ever that since they had those uh, deposit and withdrawal proc. issues, I had to get off of it. Oh, Proc. Proc was good. Proc, proc was good and Proc me. is probably wrecked right now. I haven't looked, but it's it, 215 cents. If you're looking at, uh, I would buy it right now. If you're looking on Cryptopia, I bet Proc is your one of your higher upside coins. WTC Walden Mainnet release March 31st. Uh, I got problems with them. I don't think Walden Mainnet is going to be a huge catalyst right now. Um, honestly, every mainnet that's come out has just been a dump. If there's one mainnet I'd be looking for as a release, it would be NAS. I, I think NAS is releasing their mainnet in a few days. Enigma is set to release theirs before the end of Q1. NAS, Nebula, Enigma, th those are good ones. And um, I don't know. I in the past mainnets have pumped before, and then there's been a dump after the mainnet release. But right now, there's just no movement in the market. Liquidating my Topia bags right now. I don't think you need to liquidate your Topia bags if right now. If you haven't sold, like, what well, are you selling now for? Yeah. That's a really good point. That's if you really haven't already sold, wh wh Whiskey Wednesday six weeks ago, we are over here. And everyone selling. was saying oh, that it was so <laughs> sad. And six weeks ago, when Whiskey Wednesday, one of the first ones, uh, we were just talking about how we sold most of our I've been on the portfolio. sideline with a chunk since then. And I just remember the comments. This is the saddest stream ever. Like, what's wrong with you guys? And the well, only like, trades I've made since then, then are Enigma. Everything just crashed. Storm and QLC. Because you got to be patient. And it took weeks to find those. It took. I worked on I worked on QLC for three weeks. So if you, if you just heard him, basically he only trades 100% gainers. That's it. Uh, do you think ETC is overvalued? This is this is I haven't talked about this yet. Uh, I think ETC is undervalued. Not with a Coinbase potential strong. So potential. my my play on ETC, um, it has been rumored for the longest time to be added to Coinbase. It's on the Ethereum chain essentially, so they could very easily uh, add that to Coinbase. That'd be the easiest coin that they could add to Coinbase. On top of that, Ethereum is supposed to go to proof of stake. Uh, if Ethereum goes to proof of stake and Ethereum Classic doesn't, where do you think all the Ethereum miners are going to go? Like they, they all have at the ash miners, you know, they, they all have GPUs. What do you, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to go to Mine Ethereum ETC. classic and then that's going to pump. Um, so I, I really think Ethereum classic is a really long term play. I actually, that's a told gem someone, right there. I told that's someone today that this girl texted right me and she said, uh, I'm going to buy a new miner. What do you think I should mine? I said, if you want to make a risky play, start mining Ethereum classic, because I like, I like if, it. If, if Ethereum goes to proof of uh, proof of stake, they're all gonna go to a your classic. Monster. It's the easiest transition, unless right. they go and like mine UBQ, UBIQ. Ubik, Ubik, love Ubik. So we is should, Bully, is Bully in here? We should use those offices instead of mining rigs in there. Should set up mining rigs all over the place. What do we got? What do we got? What is NOK twenty? Hey, who's coming to? Who's in California? Shill the oh, event. Still positive on AXP, uh, Milan. So I, I haven't looked back into AXP. But I do think it's a good project, um, just because of the, the team and the advisors. Um, it, it's one of those low caps that you know if they start to make some deals and put some deals together, then uh, you will you'll see some pretty nice profits. You know the the things I've been picking up are the low caps on KuCoin, and that's my favorite right now. Those are going to have the highest potential. LCN. I'm looking for you know high risk plays for that part of my portfolio, yep. and so I, I've just been. In KuCoin, literally digging. Hard. I've been digging for days. Hard. Shilla's POA. I, I don't know what POA is. A lot of coins that you know I haven't seen before. A lot of people have been asking me about uh, coins that I just haven't done any research on yet. Is there an article that said only 6% of ICOs get listed on exchanges? What? 70% are trading below ICO. Jeez. ICOs are scams, guys. Watch out. Who cares about rebrand? Uh, I care about rebrands. Usually they come with some pretty big updates. That's what the, you know, that was the first thing someone said when I was just telling everyone about Anshares. And I was like, yeah, but rebrand. You know. I mean, usually when there's a rebrand, they rebrand for a reason because they want to push a huge update. And that's just something extra that they can add well, here's to what their image. Means. Here's what rebranding means, plain and simple. It means publicity. Publicity means new eyeballs and new people taking ownership of the project, people who become fans of that. And it's it's going to be positive. Typically, publicity, especially good publicity, is good for prices. So that's why it's important. Um, not to mention the fact that you know all the signal groups out there and stuff they hear about it and 
and really close to it happening, they'll pump the price for you if you buy it now or if you bought it a week ago when we did. So, Oh, we got KJ in here. Well, what's up, KJ? He said, pump my bag, sirs. We uh, already pumped your bags. First thing, you guys first thing missed, we talked about. You guys missed last night. I had a live stream with KJ. We talked about a lot of alts. You know, he... He has a few positions uh, different than me, and he was giving some really good input on things like Icon and Cash. I know he had his Cash uh, AMA this morning as well. I Should he off. change his name? Gotta watch that. Shirtless Jew. <laughs> shirtless Shoot. Korean Jew. Shoot. Shirtless Shoot. Korean Jew. Should we change it to Shirtless Korean Jew? Think we what exchange do you think Lux will be listed on? There's just no way to say. Um, you know, KuCoin. A lot of these exchanges, from from my understanding, promise too many things, and they promise a lot of these coins that they'd be listed by the end of Q1, and I just don't see it happening. And, it, and it's not their fault, you know, it's the exchange's fault. The, ex the exchanges are under so much pressure from regulation and all these coins trying to get listed that they just can't keep up because they got to make sure everything's secure. On that note, too, you have to understand that the teams almost never know when the coin's going to be listed, and QLC is a great example of that. Some people accused us of knowing about the Binance listing because of the timing on the trade. And I wish, uh, and even if even if the team had, had known that they were going on Binance, Binance doesn't tell them when it's going to happen. And I've been told by members of teams at conferences and things that they've waited for months after making payment or after getting approved, waited for months and then a random Wednesday, boom, they're listed. And they find out when the public does. And, and I'm sure Binance does that for they, all the they, obvious They tell reasons. you that we accepted your application, yeah. but they don't say when you're going to get listed. They don't say when you're going to get listed. They said so. you're going to be listed on our exchange, uh, you know, whether they had to It's safe to say that a lot of these, uh, you know, these decent coins have good teams behind them. It's safe to say that they've done the paperwork. Applications are submitted to Trex and to Binance and payments have maybe even been made. But you got to understand that there's just going to be a process for these exchanges from a volume perspective, and they're not going to just dump 10 coins onto an exchange. So there's going to be a waiting list that's going to take time. But if you're willing to wait it out, then sometimes you get lucky like we did on the timing with QLC. DBC is next for the NEP5 tokens. What else is NEP5? I don't know. D DBC probably tell. will be the next one to be listed on Binance, though, as far as, far as uh, coins on Neo blockchain. You shouldn't do that. It's bad for you. There you go. Sorry, Birch. It's all right. It's uh, worried, I worry about you, that's all. How much does it cost to get listed on Binance? I've heard between 100K and 2 million. So, uh, varies pretty substantially. I've had very good sources tell me at two million. So. Yeah. Thoughts on Neo? Uh, I've never been a fan of Neo, to be honest. I was. And I was. I was a fan of and That yeah. was one of my first big plays, but that was I, I never liked a huge Neo. big play. I still. Well, I mean, right now where Neo is, I think what it's like a five billion market cap. I think it's okay it's, right it's now. It's a good buy under under like what, what is it seventy bucks or something. Like, I, I look at NEO on the USD scale. It's been around long enough, it's had enough volume, and it trades against... Terror. I remember, it was like 0 0.011 Bitcoin, and I told everyone, I was like, short NEO, there's a huge head and shoulders in the daily. Alts that short was horrible. nice, about a month ago. And now it's down I 50%. think it's a good price right now. I, I, I would be a lot more comfortable picking up now than, than uh, you know, a couple China, of years ago. China's coming back. They're going to come back, and they're going to want Chinese coins, and they're going to want Chinese exchanges. NEO's going to have its time, I would bet. So more and more, I've heard good things about Neo, but you know I haven't really done too much research on it. I don't I don't look into these high cap coins. Yeah, I don't spend a lot of time in there because if, if there's a high cap coin that I like, it's Bitcoin, and I'm trading to get more of it. Uh, and yes, uh, Hearts, I'm still more bullish on gas than Neo. If Neo does take off, gas will be more useful and it's harder to get. Steven just said no smoke in the office. <laughs> he's, he's probably watching that from class. Why is DBC thing? I, I don't know. I, I the didn't boss say is chiming in when we're away. NAS could be coming for Neo. I mean, all these third generation blockchains, they all have the same yeah. chance of being huge. That's why, you know, in my opinion, if they're over $150, $200 million market cap when their main net goes live, I, I'm not comfortable buying it because uh, they, they just have so much competition. Everyone's trying to do the same thing. A couple of them are obviously going to take off, be worth a couple billions. Uh, but, you know, for, for the most part, a lot of these third gen blockchains are going to run into some pretty substantial problems. Someone was saying earlier, I saw in the comments, you mentioned it a few times, I missed it, but um, what, what do you do when uh, a coin that's only listed on something like IDEX or Ether Delta gets listed to a big exchange like Binance? And uh, he said, do you immediately send it over and sell it? And, you know, if I'm holding an ICO for a couple months and it finally gets listed on a big, big exchange, I'm not selling it then. I'm mean. definitely not selling it then because that means something happened. Um, you know, it's a big news event. New people are going to see it, and a lot of people aren't comfortable shopping on smaller exchanges or you know IDEX. 
So if it gets listed on something like Binance, you know, there could be a trading competition to try and improve the volume. Uh, yep. but I hold on to it after that. You can almost never, uh, you can almost never withdraw it in those instances anyways, at least effectively, because typically exchanges only have so much um, hot currency, right? That's yeah, like there's not a lot of liquidity when it gets so they don't. Listed. So when you have all these people trying to withdraw tens of millions of coins of the same coin for the same reason, um, they get shut down pretty quick. And we, we block array out. will be big. Gat and Birch, please see this. I've never heard of block array. I know it's on KuCoin. Tweet it. Tweet it to me. Tweet it at us. Tweet, uh, at me. Commented on my uh, the pin post in my at in my me. profile. I want some gems. I want some five hundred thousand gems. Five hundred thousand dollars market cap gems. Did you guys sign up for any XICO? Never heard of it. I, again, I'm a little bit behind on the newer alts because it's not alt season yet. You know, once alt season comes around, I'm going to devote a lot more time to research, and I'm going to be picking up all these coins that are just on IDEX right now. You know, if I miss twenty or thirty percent because I'm late. I don't care. I know the upside's three to four X. You know what I'm killing myself about? What? I need to get into Tomo before all these people. Oh, uh, you do Tomo. need to get into Tomo. I can't believe I still haven't done it. I'm just Me I'm and tired KJ of... talked about Tomo last night. He's gotta get into Well Donnie's been getting us about Tomo. Donnie, Luke for Martin's a big fan and of Tomo. Luke too. Once yeah, that gets listed on an exchange, that's gonna get is it on? Uh, can I, I can pick it up on. It's only on IDEX right now. Yeah, it still up. in DAX. Yeah, I, I'm still. I'm still in uh, DAX. I'm planning on using DAX to just invest in the ICO. Exactly. Today. Modex. Modex, Modex, Modex is going to be a pretty good ICO on uh, the BlockX platform. Dubai Coin X100. Probably not, dude. Doubt it. Uh, sorry, David. I don't think Dubai Coin is going to be doing any 100x. I don't think you're going to see. I, I think 100x, 100X season is, is pretty pretty over. Uh, you know, if there's one thing that might do 100x. Maybe uh, you find the next unicorn. There'll be some. Yeah, but it's not going to be as widespread. If something's going to do a hundred X, it would honestly be something like Tomo Tomo Chain, though. Uh, Eight million dollar raise in the ICO. Yeah, that's small. You know, it gets it gets big. It gets adopted. Some hype behind it. One of those third gen blockchain platforms. Uh, update hundred million dollar market cap. That's not ridiculous. Yeah, uh, I can see that. The biggest gainers are going to be the ICOs that are raising small amounts of money. Which is three million, not a lot of people anymore. Yeah. Three to five million dollar raise, you get listed, you almost guarantee you're, you're a two X from there. Um, let's see. Am I bullish on Dottie ICO? I think Dottie is going to be one of those coins that breaks out pretty hard in the next bull run. Uh, all the ICOs that are all the ones that were hot, all the ones that you remember hearing about in ICO season, whether it was fun or not. Um, you know, I think yeah. that those are going to be the top performers. Oh, yeah, they plagiarized their white paper, right? Yeah, I mean, so what? <laughs> so what? Am bullish on AP5 tokens. Mm, not bullish on Neo. Just, Neo's not my thing. We'll do. Want to do a couple more minutes? Then, then we'll hop off. Sure. Any uh, California event? We're going to be in California. Uh, oh yeah. It's on my Twitter. I think it's the eighth, April eighteenth through nineteenth to the twenty first. We'll 21st. be in California. Uh, LA. It's a, it's a conference. People will be there. It's on our Twitter. KJ wants to know what you're doing with your storm. Did you sell it? Or are you still holding? Uh, hey, great question. Thank you. Uh, is that Korean Jew? Korean Jew. Who's, who's that? <laughs> I sold, and I disclosed this uh, within our Discord, but I sold, um, at this point, I'm, I've probably sold about 40% 40, 40 of it. I've been a big fan of there. And I sold it with the, actually, I sold it with the intention of buying back in, and I just haven't bought back in yet. I, I don't have any storm anymore. So. You know, but, but. That, that's the kind of trader right. I am, though. Once I yeah. see that crazy We play part, different. Like, like, half my it. portfolio is in investments. I'm still holding OMG from $2. I'm still holding some of that. So, um, OMG, yeah. that, that's the number one coin I think will get listed on Coinbase. Oh, my goodness. Aside from ETC. OMG is something that... And I then could, I, I think I said my third one you can last see OMG with to uh, KJ. But I, I think OMG and ETC are going to be the first two. OMG is the, is the stuff to have. Yeah. Listen, Storm's backed by the Cardano CEO, Storm's Ethereum founder, you know. uh, the CEO of Bittrack. Like, I'm in. I'm in. So, let's wait for one more right. really good question to end on. Uh, you know, if you have something really good to ask, we're we're gonna finish on that for today. It better be when moon. It better be something along the lines of when moon. I wonder what what's Bitcoin at right now. I haven't looked in, in about thirty minutes. Oh, it's probably, usually on that. Probably TV. went crazy. Yeah, I'm not sure. Make chicken. See you guys in LA. Yeah, there's a lot of good people in LA. Yeah, make sure 25% off if you use the link that him and I tweeted, which is dope because they're $600 tickets. Charter protocol. I, I don't know anything about charter protocol, so that I'll look into it. I've, I've been seeing that a lot. 7960 Bitcoin. Let's go. 7960. When is alt season? It started a week ago, dude. 
You don't see this consolidation? Everything's consolidation. Up. More Bitcoin conspiracies. For weeks. Small cap with the most credible team. None of them. You're not a small cap if you have a credible team. Storm. The whole the whole reason that small caps are so shady is because they don't have the money in the in the team right now. When start AA? I should have started. Yo, look AA into Elastos. Time. They're not. They're on Coin Market Cap, but their market cap isn't listed. I met the founder and CEO, Sunny. Um, he Elastos is backed by Jihan Wu. If you don't know who Jihan Wu is. You should know who he is. He basically owns Bitcoin. Uh, and he is an advisor to Elastos. And that is your free shill. I guarantee you will be hearing Elastos again from me Let, and from others in the future. Let's end on this question. What is the percentage of fiat versus crypto asset, assets you have got? Fiat, well, I already said I'm 30% fiat. I'm 70% crypto. Of that 70% crypto, I'm about 60% Bitcoin. I was about 80% Bitcoin until we hit that $280 billion target I had, and that's when I went into Poly, Storm, um, QLC, a couple others. Now I'm 60% Bitcoin, 40% alts. I'm back to 20% fiat, uh, 80% crypto. 80% crypto, probably 30% Bitcoin, maybe 25% Bitcoin, now 70, 70 75% Less Bitcoin. Alts. Less Bitcoin. Less, I, I don't need my Bitcoin. I like it. I like I, it. I'm, I know that I know you what I'm doing. You trust your positions. Exactly. I totally I like it. I like it. I talked about it last night again with KJ. Like we, we trust our positions. I know what I'm getting into. And I you have the power to buy with. more and reduce your cost averaging. Exactly. You Dollar cost averaging always. All right, we're gonna end the stream here. Uh, Hope like, you enjoyed it. I feel like this was a decent, yeah, decent was little, one. some some information. Not there. not enough shit shit post talking. Not enough shit posting, but I think it was all right. Hopefully you guys learned something or enjoyed yourself. As Dale would remind you, tip your waitress, but I won't steal that from him. Enjoy your day, everybody. God bless and God.